Greetings everybody, this is Stephen McKay or Electric Tark on YouTube. Um, today I'm going to give uh, the uh, uh, Velleman Instruments HPS 10 SE a uh, review. I've had this uh, device for well, approximately a year or so. I have my own um, oscilloscope, but this one it has come in handy occasionally. Um, it is a it has a 10 million samples per second, a 2 megahertz analog um, sampling. Uh, it has a uh, 128 by 64 uh, screen, backlit blue. So let's turn her on and let's take a look at her. Now, one of the things about this device is. Uh, it's actually not bad. I paid approximately $130 US for what it was on sale. Uh, right now, I believe their going rate is around $160 or so. This is the special edition. It's backlit blue uh, or white transmissive. And uh, has a variety of functions. It's a, Right now, I'm feeding uh, um, a frequency from my... From my um, function generator and let's change the frequency oh it's on hold so go memory hit memory and it'll go back to normal and I can play with that I can change it's, it's a triangle wave square wave you know I can ch increase the frequency let's put it up to 4 megahertz let's see what happens this is a 5 megahertz function generator so let's see how. Let's see now I'm going to change the time to vision. See, I can. It gives you an approximate. Um, and if you look over here, it gives you an approximate frequency of the distance between those two markers, and you can change those markers. Uh, it does not have live frequency detection, so it's detecting, let's see what happens if I go like this. I don't know, doesn't like that very much, I'm at 3 megahertz. And it is on square wave, so this really does show you how inaccurate this device is. It uh, says 10 megahertz, but, uh, you know, a 2 megahertz sampling rate, but look at the error. It's in, uh, quite remarkable. You do get this cheap um, probe with it, which I suppose is good, but uh, what else would I say about this? device. I would also say that the battery life is less than stellar. Um, you know, I haven't really counted how long it, or, you know, determined how long it'll work. Um, but if you leave the batteries in the device, the batteries will get eaten up. And uh, even if it's off. So, you know, I've left it in there for a month and the batteries were dead by the time I got to it. Sometimes a week and they're almost dead. So, um, maybe they've changed it with uh, later versions. So let's go back to a normal frequency here. Let's go. Uh, let's put it right at t approximately 10 kilohertz, let's say. And let's move the time divider. Right, and then we can look at it. Uh, this does have some nice features, um, aside from the fact that it lacks a trigger. Uh, it lacks a, tr a trigger locator along the side like a regular oscilloscope would have. Um, and also it does not have a frequency counter. Uh, right now it's at 13.8 kilohertz, but what you have to do is use the markers. Right, I'm going to move the left marker right, to a position right, right on that line so I can measure it. I hit marker again and I move it over and that's 10 kilohertz, which is fairly close to what I'm getting over here. 
so let's see here. Let me get rid of this glare. Okay. Um, it does have some nice display. And considering the low resolution of the screen, I can change the display. I can, uh, you know, change it over the dots and this and that. Right now it's marker. I can change what's displayed on the screen. Um, right. This is probably one of the nicer <coughs> versions of that display. Uh, you can change what's measured. Uh, of course, we have uh, volt DC. Uh, I believe. I don't think that's peak to peak, but this is uh, maximum voltage, uh, minimum voltage. This is uh, peak to peak distance and AC. Um, obviously, decibels, decibels, blah blah blah. <coughs> DC plus AC. Uh, I think that's watts. I don't remember. It doesn't really make any sense. I'll have to look in the manual for that one. But anyways, let's put it back on there. See, so just press... If you look at the control scheme, it's pretty simple. Uh, you do have a probe difference memory. Uh, it's switching between AC and DC. Um, there is an optional charger you can use. And you can put, uh, I think, nickel metal hydride batteries in it. And uh, that's your marker trigger. Only the trigger only works to change this style of trigger. So run once. So trigger once, and then I'll put it on hold. I have to press memory. Um, and pressing up and down on the trigger. On the more advanced models, what it will do is actually change the trigger point. But on this one, it just moves the graph up and down. Um, Let's see how small it'll go. One microsecond per div. Hundred microseconds per div. And it'll go up to an hour per division. Let's see here. Which is kind of handy for monitoring. Oh, five hours per division, so uh, let's show you what the divisions look like. Right, so that would be a division right there. So every five hours, it would make uh, a full one one cross section of these. Um, what else? There's not a hell of a lot else to say, but except for the only problems I have with it are the is the back the stand isn't really long enough. This is okay. Uh, the battery life is poor at best and uh, it does have an auto range function. Right? So, but really all in all for 130 bucks and if you're just if you're just doing amateur stuff and you just want to look at what the stereo is outputting or whatever um, it's not bad. If you are doing stereo work obviously you want to get an analog uh, they tend to be a little more responsive on the trigger and showing exactly what's going on a lot quicker, but this is more than adequate for most things. Uh, low, low frequency serial stuff, you know, like uh, it would probably happily do, uh, you know, baud rates on serial ports like 58400 or whatever. Or, yeah, I believe that's the speed. Um, yeah, so, anyways. Uh, hopefully this was uh, an informative review. I may uh, show more about it some other time. But everybody have a good night and please leave comments if you have any questions.